Welcome to another Coopcast Internet Show. I'm your host, Jeff Cap, and this week we have Shafi Kalecki from Seymour, Connecticut. Shafi, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice for having you. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, we have a few questions we'd like to ask you this week. Um, one of the questions is, is how long have you been breeding pigeons? Uh, I've been breeding pigeons for pretty much all my life. Um, I started since I was young, since I can remember. And uh, on and off, I stopped for a few years, but I'm back for the last 10 years. And uh, there it goes. All right. And uh, do you have any specific breeds that you raise? Uh, I have, uh, I'm more into flying breeds. I have English tipplers, and I do have some Serbian eye flyers. I do have some uh, fancy pigeons, like German owls and English tumblers, but mostly with the flying breeds, I like to fly birds, so okay. especially eye flyers. Okay. And uh, do you have any secrets on uh, raising uh, any of those specific breeds? Well, you do try to keep track of the best birds, breed them like the best to the best, and you know, keep a line going and stuff like that. Yeah. Nothing secret, but you know, something that's known for most. And, and the bird you're holding in your hands right now, what, what breed would this be? This would be a Serbian eye flyer that has a crest. Uh, there's a medium-sized bird that fly really high and for long hours. So. Okay. And, and, and this would be a black? This would be black and white, yeah. Just a black and white? Yeah. Okay. A, and it, could you give us any um, tips on, if you were to judge this bird, uh, how many flights it might have? Or do they, do they even go by a point system? With they do, but this, like I said, mostly this bird is known for flying. Okay. They get judged for uh, their height. They're supposed to be flying high until you cannot see their wind movement. Okay. And they judge by the time and stuff. Uh, they do on the shows. Uh, I do show them myself sometimes, but they're not really a show bird. They're more fly bird, but they do judge them by the head, the crest, the beak, the feet, the, fel the tail feathers and stuff like that. Uh, but it's like I said, mainly it's a flying bird. So, okay. but they they do look nice for the shows too. So, dude, it's a very nice looking bird. And uh, do you belong to any specific clubs? Uh, I belong to a few clubs. Uh, one, it's uh, Fair Count. Actually, I'm the president right now of the club, and uh, also I belong to the. Uh, FTS, which is a Flying Tipler Society of USA, and I also belong to the Tri-State Serbian High Flyer Club that we just organized the last five years, so we're working on it, so. Okay, okay. Um, do you have any advice that you would give um, someone just starting out in the hobby or getting into a specific breed? Any advice to someone new? Well, you know, when you get into a certain breed, you got to pick a breed you like and uh, find the best breeder of that breed and go there, you know, it's the best way to go. Go to, you know, the guy that, for example, that competes with the birds or the guy that shows the birds and one thing, go get birds from them. Mm -hmm. Get the birds, bird, get the best birds you can get, get the best to start, you know. And when someone starts off with birds, would you recommend them starting off with just one or two pairs or, or trying to purchase as many birds as they can? What would, you, what would your advice be to a beginner? I, I would see, you know, depends what, first they got to realize what they like, you know, visit as many people as shows and coops you can and, you know, see what you like and start with that breed. I would start at least, you know, more in two pairs, you know, you know how that goes when you first get them and, you know, go from there. So just have control of them. That's it. Okay. Okay. And when you got started in the pigeons, um, did you have a specific mentor that you uh, looked at or, or towards? Uh, getting into the pigeon hobby or for a specific breed? Uh, well, what I come from overseas, uh, this breed is a very popular and uh, also there's a, the Donex, you know, that they use mostly and the Tipplers are very popular. There's other breeds, but they're more popular than anything. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of people that I was inspired, you know, a lot of people that had a lot of good birds and over there it was a big thing. Almost every neighbor and every neighborhood had people that kept birds, so, you know, it yeah. was like everywhere you went, you know. Uh, for me, it started. One of my uncles had them for a while, and when I was a kid, I started liking them. But I couldn't keep them. Obviously, my parents won't let me until I got a little bit old, older, and then, you know, start building cardboard boxes and all that stuff. You know? <laughs> um, so you, you you started breeding pigeons. Um, what would you? How old were you then? When I first got seriously, I had them on and off, and when I was a kid, you know, through the pretty much 10 years old and stuff like that even earlier but you know not seriously when I started I was 14 when I built my first real coop and started breeding actually breeding really uh, progressive and you know starting looking for competition and stuff 
so. Oh, okay. Now, do you give your birds any special type of feed or diet that, uh, they, uh, that you, you follow? I do follow some diets I've learned through the years. You know, depends on the birds, uh, what stage are in their training and stuff like that. And, you know, I start, start them out with barley and then slowly you know work depends on their progress and stuff like that and change their diet so okay and any, any specific uh feed that you're, uh, you're using right now right now i use pure grain A pure grain yeah mix. that's okay. easier accessible to me right now so that's okay. what i use but i do uh, buy additional stuff that i mix in it you know like soft flour sunflower corn at the winter i add more to it and stuff like that but mm -hmm. pretty much and uh, for, for the drinking water, do you just give them strictly pure water or do you ever add vitamins to the I water? I always add some, something to the water. At least one day or twice a day I give them straight water. For the most part, most part I do put vitamins, uh, minerals, uh, oil, I mean uh, teas and whatever I could think and they need it, I'll do it. So, you know, you got to give them because these boards are locked up for the most part and you got to bring nature to them inside. You know, it's... They can't get it yeah. out, so you need it for feathers or health. So you you gotta give them vitamins and stuff. Okay, and I, we we noticed that you have a beautiful loft here. What size loft would do you have here? Uh, my loft is uh, 14 by 8. Uh, I just built it last year. I finished it up. I still got a little bit small things to finish up, but it's it's done and uh, it works pretty well for me. You know, I divide it in sections and flying and breathing and all that stuff. So. Okay. Um, and one of the last questions we're going to leave you with um, is have you won any specific awards with uh, the birds that you've bred? Either uh, let it be for showing or for flying records or anything? Yes, I have. Uh, unfortunately, with the club, with the Serbian Eye Flyers, we just started. We have not any real competitions because of work and time and everything else. Mm -hmm. But I, I've been competing with the Tiplers for a few years. Um, I won uh, my best time for them. It's 13-13. Uh, I won a few times uh, diplomas and stuff. And also, I've been entering the birds to the shows uh, here in Connecticut anyway. And uh, I won a few times champion of the bird, but, uh, the breed. But you know, it's not meant much competition. Fortunately, you only get about 25 birds, 30 birds, yeah. which is you know. But we're working on it. So hopefully, by next few years, get more people involved and grow the, the breed okay all right well, we're, we're gonna go take a look inside Shafi's loft in uh, one second here so just uh, hold on and we'll be right there okay Shafi if you don't mind showing us your uh, yeah, coop here this all would be right. great well this is a coop I built um, I divided it in three three sections and uh, that's the one you're looking at right there that's a breeding section for the Serbian eye flyers I, bl I built a lot of Nest boxes, but I don't use them all, as you can see. So you know, just built some extra. I built them all myself. So. And these nest boxes that you have here look like they uh, would just slide right out for yeah. easy cleaning, pretty much. Those things all can be removed. They're not even attached. They just hang in there, basically. And you can take them out, take them apart, and clean them. They easy. I try to make it as easy as possible. Yeah, those are that's very nice. And then I noticed on the ground that you're using a specific type of, I don't know if you want to call it litter. Yeah, it's a, they call it a horse pallet or horse bedding. They come in pallets and they kind of break up. Pretty much it becomes like a wood shavings, but it's pretty good. It's not dusty at first and it works really well. It keeps the. Really nice here. So now we're going to go over to our second compartment here. And what would this compartment over this here be? This compartment is the flying birds. There's all the flyers that I keep here. And um, most of them, they're all females here, the cockbirds. Um, they're basically when they're in training, obviously. Right now we're not flying because of the hawks, but hopefully soon once the spring hits. So, so usually once the weather gets warmer? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's when you'll let your birds yeah, have to fly. Yeah, uh, once the trees start to blossom, or you know, because that's when the hawks don't bother me as much. They still do, but not as bad. You know, right now it's okay. suicide basically to let something out. All right, and then in your third compartment over here to in the left. In the third compartment, this is my tiplers I breed. Uh, I normally breed about eight pairs, nine pairs, depends. Uh, this year I got about nine pairs. Um, nothing much, I probably breed them around. 
Well, this is a very nice setup, Chaffee. And uh, we do appreciate you showing us your uh, loft here. And uh, I'm sure all the viewers here appreciate it as well. So thank you for showing us your loft. You're welcome. Anytime. Well, thank you, Shafi, for showing us the inside oh, of your thank loft. You. you got a beautiful coop. Um, again, thank you for coming onto the show. Thank and we you look for forward to everyone uh, watching another Coopcast Internet show down the road. Thank you for watching this week. See you again. Thank you.